It was a jam-packed week of pro wrestling. Here are some of the biggest highlights you must know. Kicking things off with AEW Collision, Willow Nightingale has won this year's Women's Owen Hart Foundation Tournament. The finish of the match saw Ruby plant a spray paint bottle on Willow. As the referee was busy, Ruby clawed the eyes and hit the no future kick with Willow kicking out. Ruby then went for another spray paint bottle, but Willow connected with a pounce, then hit a gut wrench powerbomb to win the match. Following her victory, confetti was blasted into the ring as Willow celebrated. And over over on the men's side, Ricky Starks has won this year's Owen Hart Foundation Tournament. The finish of the match had Ricky Starks and CM Punk rolling up one another in a near fall sequence. Ricky Starks then shifted his weight to cover CM Punk and grabbed the top rope for leverage, scoring the win. As Collision ended and Battle of the Belts began, Ricky Starks exited the ring as CM Punk sat up stunned. Starks snatched the men's Owen Hart Foundation Tournament trophy from Jushin Thunder Liger, completely ignoring him as he made his exit. This weekend, Impact Wrestling made their Slammiversary pay-per-view a newsworthy one with plenty of title changes. In the night's co-main event, Trinity, the former Naomi in WWE defeated Deanna Perrazzo to kick off her first run as Knockouts Champion. Trinity got the victory following a series of headbutts, a full Nelson bomb off the middle rope, and then starstruck for the submission victory. It's the first major singles title for Trinity since her second run as WWE SmackDown Women's Champion ended back in 2017. After eventually gaining her WWE release, Trinity debuted with Impact in March of this year, and it's now 5-0 in her new home. The win ends the three-month reign of Deanna Perrazzo, who began her third run with the title back in April. In another high-profile change, Leo Rush defeated Chris Sabin to kick off his first-ever run as X Division Champion. Additionally, Masha Slamovich and Killer Kelly also became the new Knockouts Tag Team Champions. The duo defeated the Coven, which was the team of Taylor Wilde and Kylan King, to win the title, their first in Impact. Also, former Impact World Champion Eric Young returned from the dead at Slammiversary, teaming with Scott Demore in a surprise appearance. Eric Young and Scott Demore, part of the former Team Canada from the early TNA Impact days, defeated Bully Ray and Diener in a tag team match. Eric Young was the mystery partner for Scott Demore after PCO was taken out by Bully Ray and the injured Steve Macklin several weeks ago. Diener replaced Macklin due to the injury. In late November 2022, Eric Young was killed off in a storyline in brutal fashion by Diener, who then took over the design faction. The reason for that was because Eric Young signed with WWE in early November for an eventual in-ring return in either WWE or NXT. However, FIFO reported that Eric Young had asked for his release a few months later and in April 2023, it was granted with his 90-day non-compete clause running out last week. They also reported that it wasn't a coincidence he requested it after Vince McMahon returned to the company as he had no interest in working for Vince or the eventual new TKO company. Fightful wrote, WWE sources confirmed to Fightful that Young had cited moral, creative, and personal reasons as why he didn't want to work with Vince McMahon. Also on Slammiversary, former Impact World Champion Josh Alexander has returned after making a surprise appearance at the show. After Alex Shelley was celebrating his successful world title defense over Nick Aldis to close the show, Josh Alexander's music hit and he came out to confront Alex Shelley, later grabbing a microphone to say, I'm back. Josh Alexander is back from injury as he had to relinquish the title in late March due to a torn triceps for which he had to undergo surgery. Instead of facing Alexander, Steve Macklin defeated Kushida to win the vacant title at April's Rebellion before losing it to Shelly at June's Against All Odds. The question of whether Josh Alexander is set to return to in-ring action will now likely be answered Sunday during Impact's post slammiversary TV taping in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. And now moving on to Triple A's Triple Mania in Tijuana. El Hijo del Vikingo is still Triple A Mega Champion. He defeated Kenny Omega in the main event of Triple A's Triple Mania in Tijuana on Saturday to retain his title. The finish saw Vikingo hit a Poison Rana from the turnbuckle and a 6th 
30 senton to score a clean victory. The two hugged and Vikingo celebrated in the ring to end the show. Don Callis had originally been scheduled to be in Vikingo's corner for the match. However, before the bout could get underway, Conan came out and ordered Don Callis to leave the ringside area. The head-to-head -head series between the two is now tied 1-1. Kenny Omega defeated Vikingo on the March 22nd AEW Dynamite earlier this year in a match our own Dave Meltzer rated five stars. And speaking of Don Callis, after the show, he was legitimately assaulted by a fan. Brian Alvarez is reporting that there was a post-show press conference where Kenny Omega was confronted by Don Callis, leading to an angle where Kenny Omega was attacked by Kenoshke Takeshita, continuing their AEW feud. As security was breaking up the fight, that was when a fan attacked Callis from behind. Alvarez said, Everything was an angle up to that point, but then a fan who was apparently upset about what Don had said to Kenny jumped Don from behind, ripped his suit, concussed his eardrum, and busted open his mouth while he was trying to choke out Don from behind. Don was screaming profanities at the fan before he was pulled off and was said to be livid afterwards. Alvarez also said that Don Callis' neck and ankle were injured during the attack and was headed to San Diego for medical attention. Brian Alvarez reiterated that the situation was absolutely not a work. And in case you missed it, Kota Ibushi and Pac were revealed as participants in the July 19th Blood and Guts match on Wednesday's AEW Dynamite. In the show closing segment, Pac was revealed as the final member of the Blackpool Combat Club team for next week's Blood and Guts match. As the Blackpool Combat Club and Pac attacked Kenny Omega of the Elite, it was then revealed by Omega that Kota Ibushi would be the final member of the Elite's team, as Hangman Page and the Young Bucks made the save for Kenny Omega. Ibushi's long-awaited AEW debut in Blood and Guts will mark his return to the ring for the first time since March 2023. Prior to that, Ibushi had not wrestled since suffering an injury in the G1 Climax Finals for New Japan in October 2021. A lengthy injury rehab and dispute with the New Japan office followed, and New Japan Pro Wrestling officially announced Ibushi's departure from the company in January of this year. Ibushi has a storied history with Kenny Omega with five tag team title reigns across multiple promotions in Japan as the Golden Lovers. As a unit, Omega and Ibushi faced the Young Bucks in a tag team match at New Japan Strong Style Devolved in Long Beach, California in March 2018. Omega and Ibushi have not teamed since December 2018. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. Thank you guys so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe to F4W Online. And in case you missed the previous episode, you can go ahead and click on the screen to check it out now.